Hey guys, it's Alex from Seventh Hour Films back again with Sherlock. Last time on Sherlock, we had the empty hearse. Uh, Sherlock has returned from the dead uh, after two years of going around dismantling Moriarty's network, and uh, things are um, not great between him and John. The phone's ringing, of course it is. Um, and yeah, so things weren't really that great, you know, John being pissed at Sherlock, but everyone kind of got back to, you know, where they were, and eventually John did come around and had to come around again after Sherlock didn't, well, okay, he didn't fake a bomb threat, but he faked not knowing how to disable a bomb, kind of, and spooked John, basically, and there were many theories as to how Sherlock survived. He even offered some of his own, but we really don't have a clear answer as to how he did it, but oh well. Um, yeah, that was pretty much that. Um, this is where I say no spoilers in the comments whatsoever, and we might as well pop right into this episode of Sherlock. Here we go. How do they always know? Uh, they're good, <laughs> they work at it. They're never gonna stop. Oh, no, they're away. Hmm. The Waters Gang. Okay. Six months ago. I think they're gonna need someone. She's gonna have to admit they need help. And I love it. Are we about to start, like, the British Dark Knight? Please. Mm. I, I, I have to go. What? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll have to go. This is probably not important. You know any funny stories about John? What? Yeah. Best man. Any anecdotes? He's getting married. You got any trouble, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Maximum backup. No, the sheet music. <laughs> Poor Lestrade. He was about to get the Waters gang. He's buttoning with one hand. It's impressive. This is not John, is it? Is it? The music suggests otherwise. Like this is a... Huh. Who was that guy? Congratulations! Hey! That's the sort of thing you're looking for, the man over there in blue is your best bet. Recently divorced doctor with the ginger cat. A bone conversion. Mm -hmm. A history of erectile dysfunction. Ooh. Reviewing that information, possibly not your best bet. Yeah, maybe not. Sorry, there was one more deduction there that I was expecting. Mr. Holmes, <laughs> you're going to be incredibly useful. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's a good idea. Find the right guy with Sherlock Holmes. You volunteered to be a shoulder to cry on no less than three separate occasions. Do you have anything to say in your defense? <laughs> I think from now on we'll downgrade you to casual acquaintance, no more than three planned social encounters a year, and always in John's presence. I have your contact details. I will be monitoring. Oh, is he making sure that everything's okay for them? Bloody psychopath. High-functioning sociopath. Yeah. With your number. <laughs> Okay, so he's making sure that there's no problems with them. I was, for a second, I was thinking he might be getting dirt on her. I didn't think he'd show up at all. John says he's the most unsociable man he's ever met. He is. He's the most unsociable. That's why he's bouncing around him like a puppy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Sherlock. You're jealous. Neither of us were the first, you know. <laughs> it's my wedding day. <sighs> she not like her own wine so this is it then the big day i suppose i'll be seeing a lot more of you from now on what do you mean you're just like old times no, Man, I, I love these transitions it's the end of an era isn't it i'm not a child anymore mycroft no of course you're not enjoy not getting involved sherlock hmm oh he's gonna miss his buddy sherlock please don't screw this up Ah. 
the most intense I've ever seen food eaten. I confess, confess, I didn't realize he was asking me when finally I understood. I expressed to him that I was both flattered and surprised. I explained to him that I'd never expected this request and I was a little daunted in the face of it. Sherlock. I nonetheless <laughs> promised that I would do my Silent. very best to accomplish a task which was for me. It is a fact I believe that brides tend to favor exceptionally plain bridesmaids for their big day. There is a certain analogy there, I feel. And contrast plain. is, after all, God's own plan to enhance the beauty of his creation. Or it would be if God were not a ludicrous fantasy designed to provide a career opportunity for the family idiot. Oh, uh, he's going after God now. An all-round obnoxious asshole that anyone could possibly have the misfortune to meet. Yeah. I am dismissive of the virtuous. Unaware of the beautiful. Yeah. And uncomprehending in the face of the happy. Right. So if I didn't understand I was being asked to be best man, it is because I never expected to be anybody's best friend. Yeah. He's coming back around. Certainly not the best friend. And I know I speak for Mary as well when I say we will never let you down and we have a lifetime ahead to prove that. <laughs> Aww. Wow. If I try. Is that? What was? They look like Peter Dinklage. And of course, I have to mention the elephant in the room. The literal elephant. You want something. Dear Mr. Holmes, my name is Bainbridge. I'm a private in Her Majesty's household guard. I'm writing to you about a personal matter. Well, I don't care to hmm. bring before my superiors. It was These guys are impressive, I have to say. But I think someone stole me. They move for nothing. You think they give them classes? Classes? How to resist the temptation to scratch their behinds. So, Afferent neurons in the peripheral nervous system. It's so impressive. Bummage. Oh. <laughs> God, that giant fucking hat too. Hey, get the hair back. He's still breathing. Oh my God. What do we do? They give me a scarf. What? Quickly now! Call an oh, ambulance. He's still breathing. What? Call an ambulance now! Do it! Nurse, do it! Press here, hard. Nurse. Yeah. I'm making do. Keep pressure on the wound. But in all of this, there is only one element which could be said to be truly remarkable. John? Would anyone like to make a guess? Is this where John pulls through? There was one feature, and only one feature, of interest in the whole of this baffling case, and quite frankly, it was the usual. John Watson, who, while I was trying to solve a murder, instead saved a life. Yay. However, I'm not just here to praise John, I'm also here to embarrass him, so let's move on to... No, wait, so how, how was it done? That was what done? The stabbing. Yeah, we gotta know. I'm afraid I don't know. I didn't solve that one. That can't happen sometimes, it's very... Very disappointing. Ah. Embarrassment leads me on to the stag night. Of course, there's hours of material here, but I've cut it down to the really good bits. Ah, oh, man. Locations of murders. Mm, pub crawl theme. So this is like this is like an anthology, a Sherlock anthology. Oh, it's the dubstep Sherlock theme. <sighs> I have an international reputation. Tuh. Do you have an international reputation? No, I don't have an international reputation. No. <laughs> I have an international reputation. I have a lot of international viewers. I probably don't, really. But I do have international viewers. And I love you. See anything? Hmm? Any clues, Mr. Holmes? Oh, uh... Seat leather sleep. High tech thing. Skull deaded. <laughs> Egg chair city thing. This is what happens when he's drunk. He was running, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, uh, cartel. Got in with a really bad crowd. Right. And Yeesh. then I found out about all the other women. I didn't have a clue. So when he was actually arrested for blowing someone's head off, I 
was quite a relief, to be honest. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Steals the man's home, steals his identity. But only for one night. And he's gone. He's not a ghost, John. He's a mayfly. He lives for a day. Hmm. So, what was it he was looking for? This is an interesting way of John. doing this. Gotcha. What do you mean? Everyone has secrets and they all replied too quickly. Got a guy. Hmm. See ya. No. Bye Wait. bye. Sorry, sexy. Some secrets have to stay secret. Wait, what? Enjoy the wedding. Damn. Why would he date all of those women and not return their calls? You're missing the obvious, mate. Am I? He's a man. Sir. Why would he change his identity? Today begin the adventures of Mary Elizabeth Watson and John Hamish Watson. The two Yay. reasons why every single one of us is said John Hamish Watson. You said that. You said Hamish. Yeah. Oh. This is a famous detective. It's Sherlock Holmes and his partner, John Hamish Watson. How, How you do you know? know? Yeah. Henry? Shut up. Sir. Humphrey. Shut up. Huh. Higgins? <laughs> Took him years to confide in me. <sighs> That's my birth certificate. Yep. <laughs> you just stole it. And the woman she knew. Hamish. <clears throat> yeah. John Hamish Watson. Just if you were looking for baby names. So. God knows where she is. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Out of my head, I am busy. Aww. Oh, Sherlock. What do we say about coincidence? The universe is rarely so lazy. So, so the balance of probability so is lazy. someone went to great lengths. We have control of the room. Wait. Ah, yes. Raising glasses is standing up. Very good. Thank you. Don't lose it. Yeah, come on. Down again. It's interesting that Mycroft is in his head. It's like his brain speaking to him. The lose, please. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's your turn. Yeah, actually, now you mention it. Ah, so, okay. Any chance of a, an end date for this speech? Got to cut the cake. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, can't stand it when I finally get the chance to speak for once, Vatican cameos. What did he say? What does that mean? Vatican stations. Oh, so oh shit. The one who tried to kill the guardsman. Oh. Break. Oh, Bye rehearsal. Break. Excuse me, coming through. Consulting. Stay here. Huh. Excuse me. Coming so he's through. going to be killed. Now there is a man in there about to die. The game is on. Solve it! Yeah. Belt. Bainbridge was stabbed hours before we even saw him, but it was through his belt. Tight belt, worn high on the waist. Very easy to push a small blade through the fabric and you wouldn't even feel it. The, wow. the belt would bind the flesh together when it was tied exactly. to when you took it off. Delayed action stabbing. All the time in the world to create an alibi. Major okay. Sir. So. Of course, Wancho, but not at John's wedding. We wouldn't do that, would we? You and me. We would never do that to John Watson. Hmm. I believe I am in need of medical attention. Yeah. I believe I'm your doctor. Okay. There is always a man at a wedding who is not in any photograph, but can go anywhere. You can carry an equipment bag around with him if he likes. The cameraman. You can never even see his face. The one time Schulte would have to be out in public. Oh, yeah. So he made his plan and rehearsed the murder. Oh, yeah. Making sure of every last detail. Oh. Right. Hmm. Wow. This might be my favorite episode now. From now on, I swear I will always be there. Always. For all three of you. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean, I mean two of you. Or two of you. Both of you, in fact. I just miscounted. Oh, anyway, shit. It's time for dancing. Increased appetite. Stop. Change of taste perception. Oh, I chose this one. Oh, that no. Is... You were sick this morning. You assumed it was just wedding nerves. You got angry with me when I mentioned it to you. All the signs are there. The signs? She's pregnant. Signs of three. Mary, I think you should do a pregnancy test. Well, uh, shut up, sorry. 
How did he notice before me? I'm a bloody doctor. Down. <laughs> stop, down. Stop, stop panicking. Not... You're already the best parents in the world. Look at all the practice you've had. What practice? Yeah, I'm You're him. You're going to need me around now that you've got a real baby on the way. <laughs> Aww. Man, you don't gotta leave. You know, sometimes, sometimes when I think about this show, I'm like, ah, oh, man, you know, it takes me forever to edit these episodes, and, you know, they're just so long, and you really, you gotta plan, like, over two hours to record these, and then all of that melts away the second I start watching. Ah. Uh. All that melts away, and I remember that I love this show, because <laughs> I do. What a great episode. Uh, what a great episode. I I'm really enjoying that this season, like, I don't want to say, like, the investigations are taking a, s like, they're taking a step back. You know, they're, I don't know, it's, it's, like, weird to describe. It's, like, we're getting a whole lot more of just their lives, you know? So... Yeah, I like it. I do like it. It's nice. Okay. Okay. Oh man. Oh, that that was a good episode. I enjoyed that one. <sighs> Sorry, right, there's a hair. There's a hair that is stuck in this tablecloth and I'm trying to get it out. I realized that I went silent for like 20 seconds, but still. Okay, let's go ahead and hop right into the notes for this episode. Uh, the first thing I wrote down was the Waters Gang. Um, they really, that was dropped. That, that was completely dropped. Um, I was hoping... I kind of suspected that this episode would be... Um, I suspected that uh, this episode would be uh, Lestrade and Donovan needing Sherlock to solve the Waters Gang case. And then we could get Sherlock rubbing his nose in fucking Donovan's face. Because I want that. I want that. I want her to, you know... Oh, I, I want her to fuck off, but still. So... But that was not what we ended up doing. It was just sort of a cold open to... Um, to the wedding, basically. Okay. Uh, the next thing I wrote down was the wedding... Uh, very interesting that this episode was all all about John's wedding. Again, you know, normally we have the the past three or the past two seasons we had, you know, Sherlock and Watson are doing these important cases, you know, that take the entire episode. And then, you know, if they have stuff, you know, just in their lives, it happens, you know, along the way. This time, in this season at least, it seems more that they're doing stuff you know, in their lives, and then these investigations just so happen to be happening, you know? It's sort of a reverse, which I like. <sighs> I like that. It's, it, it, it is really nice, actually. So, so yeah, this one was all, it, it was all about, 
uh, the wedding between John and Mary, but at the same time, there was sort of the underlying uh, Mayfly case, as well as the Bloody Guardsman case. So, <sighs> so yeah. So that was really interesting. Um, I wrote down best man. It is hilarious to think of Sherlock as a best man. You know, I was kind of worried, like, I don't know, like, I, I feel like in a typical show, or like maybe a show that's not as good as this, they might do the whole, you know, try to split them apart or something like that. I guess that would happen in like a bad show, you know, more of the, well, you gotta, maybe like Sherlock's trying to split them up or something. It's like, no, it, it, it wasn't that. Or, you know, he makes he makes a scene because, you know, he doesn't want things to change with John. It, it really wasn't that. The only real reason that, you know, him being the best man was awkward was just because he's Sherlock, honestly. So, um, and th but that's the thing is that, you know, even with, you know, Mycroft talking to him and being like, oh, well, you know, things are going to change, Sherlock. Um, that's my best Mycroft impression. I hope you liked it. Um... It's friggin' collar. Uh, this, for some reason, this t-shirt just really hangs. Sorry, I didn't mean to flash some chest hair at you. So, I always try to, like, do that, especially on camera. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, even, like, Mycroft was kind of messing with him about it. I was like, oh, well, you're losing your friend. This is what normal people do, Sherlock. Um, but even with that, you know, Sherlock didn't really... Sherlock didn't, I don't know, it, it didn't go that route. Oh, excuse me. It didn't go that route, which I do enjoy. So, I, I'm glad it didn't go that route. The only reason that whole best man speech was awkward was just because it's Sherlock Holmes. And Sherlock Holmes is awkward like that. So, um, I wrote down the flashbacks. I thought those were funny. Uh, at the beginning, let's see. ba ba da ba like, we had a lot of different, like, flashbacks, which was nice. You know, we had, um... Well, I also, like, Sherlock's girlfriend, basically, in this. I thought she was, uh... I thought she was fun. Um, you know, just, like, asking him for help. I hear... I think I might have heard Darby. I'll go check. He might want in. Alright. Where was I? So, I did, like, uh... Basically, Sherlock kind of being a wingman to uh, the girl. I don't remember what her name was. Um, she looked. She actually kind of looked like uh, Adler, which was interesting. And then they have the flashbacks to, you know, uh, the one guy. And I thought at first when he was talking to the one guy, I was like, oh, well, is, is he trying to get dirt on on Mary or something? And it's like, no, we're not doing that. And I was, I was stupid for thinking that is no, it, it wasn't that he was trying to, I guess he was trying to be sure that the guy didn't do anything. Basically. I don't know. There was a reason. Um, and then we got the kid, <laughs> the kid who was like, he was, I guess, I don't know. Like he was, he was hired to like help the kid. And then the kid was just like, can I see murders? And he was like, yeah, sure. And he just shows him murders. And so the kid's all happy now and he's all good. So, so that was funny. And then we got the flashback to planning the wedding and, and Mary basically setting the two of them up so that they will go on a case and just stop. Yeah, well, just cause they needed to. And I love the flashback when he's talking about how John asked him to be the best man. And, you know, he's going through all this stuff, and it just cuts back to him. He's just staring. So, I thought that was funny. Um, what else did we have? They they talked about, like, other cases that they had. Um, yeah, these other cases. Yeah. Yeah, the person who was debating on whether or not to go back or go to them. I love that. 
I have to mention the elephant in the room, and it just cuts to a room with an elephant. Like, I, damn, I want to know that. I wish some of these they would, like, make into minisodes. Like, that would be cool. You know, just a ten-minute case that they solve quickly. You know? That would be really cool if they did that. Um, but yeah, and then we got uh, the Bloody Guardsmen, which... Man, I was getting really invested in that one, and then they just drop it, and I'm like, ah, you know? But I, I like, you know, it shows John's importance, because, I mean, throughout the show, I've been saying, like, okay, well, why is John here? <laughs> no, I mean, like, because I've always wanted John to have, like, you know, a time to shine, basically, and this definitely highlights, you know, the importance of John Watson, you know? And I like, I like uh, Sherlock saying, it's like, okay, well... You know, you hire me to solve the case. You get him, you get John Watson to save a life, you know, to save your life, basically. So, oh, I did like that. And just the whole situation with the Bloody Guardsmen, I thought was really interesting. You know, it really, like, it's really interesting, these Guardsmen around, uh, I guess, the palace? Like, I guess that's where they would be? I guess. I don't know. I don't know, Britain. Um... But yeah, the whole thing with these these guardsmen that they cannot move at all and they have, you know, the strict, you know, way of walking and everything and it's a very strict, you know, thing. Those were words. But just the that whole thing is just so interesting to me. It's like, wow, just to have the resolve to do that and also just to look completely forward. Like luckily, you know, he was able the guy was able to blink too. But, you know, just stay. Like, that kind of resolve is incredible, you know? And especially, too, I could, I would be horrible at that. I would be so horrible. Now, I don't know, like, what kind of training, you know, they even joke, like, do they teach a class on, you know, resisting the urge to scratch your ass, you know? It's like, yeah, like, it, are there any, like, I would have to assume there's training for it, you know, discipline you have to go through. Because, look, my eyes, my eyes are actually not very still. Uh, my eyes actually go all over the place. I cannot maintain eye contact to save my life. I find eye contact and not awkward. I mean, it's just like, like, there's nothing wrong with, you know, staring into each other's eyes makes it sound weird but th there's nothing wrong with eye contact i just i can't okay you know what okay here's what it is i don't it's not that i can't make eye contact with you it's just that i don't care to my eyes naturally drift around everywhere at all times you know um that's the thing is that my my eyes do not stay still so um so i would not be able to do that i would be you know, even if I had the discipline to, you know, stand completely still like that and not even move my head or anything, my eyes would still be all over the place. I would be, I'd be looking up and down the streets, I'd be judging people, I'd be judging the people that come up to me and want pictures and shit. Like, I would be judging everyone, you know? So. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that whole, like, that whole case was just so interesting. And then when they dropped it like that, it's like, oh, come on, you know? And I do like Sherlock, you know, asking the crowd and Lestrade, you know, a asking Lestrade, like, what are what his theories were. I, I do feel bad that Tom had nothing, you know, for a guy that's supposed to be, you know, discount Sherlock, he, he has nothing. Even Lestrade had something, so, um... Anywho, uh, I wrote down drunk. Uh, the two of them got drunk. I thought that was funny. Um, the two of them got drunk and then had a case that they completely botched because they were drunk. Uh, but luckily, they did get to solve it, you know, in the end, the, uh, the Mayfly Man. So. All right. Uh, I wrote down Mr. Hudson. <laughs> So, I mean, they they said it a little bit in this episode where, you know, like, Mr. Hudson was, like, convicted of murders or something. Which, did they say that at the beginning? 
Did they say something about that? Like, Sherlock... Yeah, I think so. Like, I think when they were moving into Baker Street, Sherlock was like, you know... Uh, Sherlock says, like, oh, don't worry, I gotta... I have a good deal. And Watson was like, oh, what? Did you... Did you help uh, Mrs. Hudson's husband get out of jail? It's like, no, I helped them execute him. So, yeah, I do remember that, actually. That he helped, like, his execution... And so we get more details on that, that Mr. and Mrs. Hud- Mr. and Mrs. Hudson lived in Florida where Mr. Hudson ran a drug cartel until he eventually pissed too many people off. And then I guess after that, Sherlock executed him, basically. Man, that is crazy. That is really crazy. Uh, but really funny, so I do like that. Uh, I wrote down Mayfly, the Mayfly Man. Uh, th- that was an interesting case, like, when he was trying to figure it all out, and he had, and I like that it's like, okay, he's on, like, you know, multiple different chat rooms on, you know, thousands of laptops, but the way they visualized it, I thought that was very interesting. Like, what kind of looked like this, like, I guess that that's not really a parliament room. Uh, maybe it is a parliament room, but it's not, I'm pretty sure it's not the parliament room. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But, you know, the, just sort of this government room and, you know, just all the women and just, no, 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 no. All right, you five. Or you four. And then Tessa came back. So. So I thought that was very interesting, the way they, like, visualized it. I wrote down H. John's middle name. I like that that was the distinction. That, you know, how did she know... How did she know John's middle name? I like that that was sort of the way that they figured it out. And what did they say? What was his middle name? I don't remember. Part two is more action based. I'm going to walk around shaking his up a bit. Who goes to a wedding? That's the question. Who would bother to go to any lengths to get themselves to a wedding? So. Huh. John's great too. I haven't said that enough. Barely scratched the surface. I could go on all night about the depth and complexity of his jumpers, and he can cook. He does a uh, thing in the peas. Huh. Oh, it might not be peas. Might not be him. But he's got a good <laughs> singing voice, or something that he does. Too many, too many, too many. Sorry, too many jokes about John. Huh. I do like, I do like real quick, I, I really like the sort of, you, you get a look into Sherlock's subconscious kind of, and the the voice kind of of his subconscious, which he's trying, you know, which he sort of bounces ideas off of in his head, is Mycroft. I think that's really, I think that's brilliant, you know, that it's like, you know, when he needs to figure out how everything works then all the questions, you know, that need to be asked come from Mycroft, basically. Because to him, Mycroft is smarter, so. Let's talk about all of which is suggestive of murder. Sorry, did I say murder? I meant to say marriage. But, you know, the, <laughs> some of the procedures when you think about it, the participants tend to know each other, and it's over one of <laughs> In fact, murder is a lot quicker though. Janine, what about this one? Except to be hot. More importantly, his girlfriend's wearing brand new uncomfortable underwear and hasn't bothered to pick this thread off the top of his jacket or point out the grease smudge on the back of his neck. Currently he's going home alone. Also, he's a comics and sci-fi geek. They're always tremendously grateful when you put the hours in. Tuh. Jeff, the gent. The loo's now, please. Quake. The loo, please. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's your turn. Yeah. Lock this place down. I, I like that getting to Lestrade. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, can't stand it when I finally get the chance to speak for once back in cameo. Yeah. Oh, Vatican cameos. Now, I forget they've mentioned Vatican cameos before. I don't remember what that. 
Oh, 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 was that from, uh, was that from The Scandal? Uh, season 2, Episode 1, I think they mentioned that there, too. I don't know, maybe you guys can help clear that up for me. Vatican cameos. But, that, that, that was kind of like a, oh, shit, sort of moment when, it's like, Vatican cameos, and it's like, what is that? Battle station, someone's gonna die, it's like, oh, shit. Here we go. Narrow it down. Huh. It's always you. John Watson, you keep me right. What do I do? There's a way to done it. Don't solve the matter. Save the life. Sorry. Off feast a bit. Back now. <laughs> Let's play a game. Let's play murder. Imagine someone's gonna get murdered at a wedding. Exactly would you I think you're a popular choice at the moment, dear. Sir. Well, so. This house is slightly out of reach. That would be lovely. Sir. So. More importantly, who could you only kill at a wedding? Most people can kill any old face. As a mental exercise, I've often found the murder of friends and colleagues <laughs> on. I'd poison. It's a lot easier. Dead easy. Human chemicals and compounds. That and, uh, I do need to skip ahead a bit to where we were. It was a miracle no one succumbed to the temptation. I got the keys to my brother's house. I could easily break in there yeah. Shut up. Shut up, Tom. Uh, I think I passed it. Hamish. That was it. John Hamish Watson. Which only a f select few people know. Now, everyone who got the invitation, yes, Sherlock, because he tracked down John's birth certificate because it drove him insane. Uh, and then the woman, she knew. We got a cameo of Irene Adler, which was nice. Um, and yeah, so why would Tessa know his name? He never uses his middle name because he hates his middle name. Uh, so I like that. That was like 10 minutes to say, I like that. Yeah, oh well. Um, but we also did talk about Vatican cameos, which I thought was uh, really cool. Again, you guys are going to have to tell me, you guys are going to have to remind me because I'm because I'm dumb and I forget things. You're going to have to remind me what Vatican cameos was. Um, and then Mycroft being uh, sort of Sherlock subconscious, basically. I thought that was really cool. Um, I wrote down the belt, the... The belt... Okay, so what was it like... So, he already stabbed the guy, but the belt kept him alive. Both times. The belt kept him alive until he took the belt off. See, I was kind of thinking, was it that there was a blade in the belt when they put it on? But it's not that. If I could find it... Yeah. Yeah. Very famous. He's a drama queen too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm afraid you've already been killed several hours ago. What did you say? Don't take off your belt. My belt. Yes, Bainbridge was stabbed hours before we even saw him, but it was through his belt. Tight belt, worn high on the waist. Very easy to push a small blade through the fabric and you wouldn't even feel it. Huh. The belt would bind the flesh together when you tie exactly. it. When you took it off. The blade action stabbing. Because it has to be tight. Correct, an alibi. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they he stabbed a small blade through the belt, but the belt was so tight that it didn't do anything basically the stab didn't do anything to the guys to both of them and it was only if you took off the belt that the wound would be there basically huh 
Interesting. Now that's why he did. They did say he, uh, John saved the guardsman's life. The guardsman's life, didn't he? I'm pretty sure he said that. They were able to save him. So that's that is a definitely an interesting way of doing that, you know. And it's also interesting the fact that you know this was all rehearsed, rehearsed on the bloody guardsman before done on uh, Schultzo. So. Very interesting, and then you know the rev the revelation that it was the cameraman uh, was also very interesting. Um, and then the last thing I wrote down was pregnant. Uh, Mary is pregnant, <laughs> and I do like you know Watson being like, "How is it that he figured it out? He could tell before I could tell. I'm a bloody doctor, you know." So I, I thought that was really funny. Uh, but yeah, Mary is pregnant, and so. Perhaps there will be a bit more of a drift between uh, John and Sherlock, especially, I mean, maybe, honestly, it makes sense, you know, you know, things could probably have stayed the same with the two of them just being married, but with a baby on the way, yeah, that's going to, um, that's going to uh, complicate things. Uh, the two of them are going to need to be uh, with that baby, you know, so... Uh, but yeah, I really, really love this episode. It may be my one of my favorites so far. Um, and yeah, this was really, really good. I really enjoyed it, and I am curious to see where we are going next time. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, with all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my Sherlock reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.